Nuclear power. Now, there's been a thing that we've been able to get. As a few people have noticed, if you go inside of the debug tools over here, you can actually scroll down to the bottom, and there's a lot of these little pasteable things that we can bring into our map. And one of them is this test nuclear facility right here. Something that I think the devs use to kind of test an idea and bring it into the map and whatnot. Now, I want to mention here, before we really get into this, that this building here says that it is deprecated, meaning that it's possibly not even an accurate representation of what we are going to be playing with here in the future. However, there are definitely plans to bring in nuclear energy and to kind of deal with radium and all of that stuff inside of this DLC at some point. So I figured it'd be kind of an interesting look behind the curtain, even if it isn't necessarily an accurate look at what we might end up playing with. Let's start off with this nuclear reactor and how it works. And then we'll take a look at some of the materials and some of the other things that we might have to consider in order to keep yourself safe you know, from meltdowns and all that fun stuff. So right off the bat here, this nuclear reactor has an input, and this input is for some water right here. What we got going on here is that this thing is going to take in a little bit of water inside of its tank, and we can kind of read about it right here. And we can also see that there's a little symbol right down here saying that it requires enriched uranium which is kind of an interesting thing, which is kind of interesting. When we go to look at some of the materials here, we notice that there's some new things. Matter of fact, we can find these on some other planets as well. So if we go out to the star map, and I think if I jump on over here to this one, all the way down, we can see that there's a material called uranium ore. So if we dig into the materials a little bit more, it seems like we're definitely going to dig up uranium ore, and then we have to go through a process of enriching that ore in order to make use of it inside of something like a nuclear reactor. Now, if I had to make a guess, that's going to happen in refinement, and might possibly happen in something like the molecular forge. Right now, this piece of equipment is only used for supercoolant, insulation, viscogel, thermium, stuff like that, which is kind of a little bit more end game. And I think that we might end up seeing this come into play a little bit more when it comes to enriching uranium. Or there might be a complete different machine that we end up using, but at some point it seems like we're definitely going to have to enrich that uranium. And if we take a larger look at the solids here, there's some other stuff that might pop up as well, such as corium. <laughs> which if in a gas form is nuclear fallout, which is in a liquid form is nuclear waste. Hmm, nice. We also have radium down here. We've yet to really have a use for this, but I know it's in the game. Maybe we'll see it pop up at some point. If everything goes as planned, we'll probably end up with depleted uranium. And then we'll have to figure out how to kind of get that out of our machine and get it away from anywhere where it's going to cause problems. Or maybe you melt it down into uranium. And then when it cools, it becomes depleted, depleted uranium. Look at that, specific heat, 1.69. Or you heat it up into rock gas. <laughs> and then somehow, by the magic of video game, you turn it back into igneous rock. Because who doesn't want to take that and turn it into floor tiles? Hey, I wonder if you can make uranium floor tiles. Nope, not yet. Just wait for the mod. All right, focusing back on the reactor here, you can see that it requires some enriched uranium which has to be delivered by duplicant somehow. Thankfully, we have a little bit of that right there. Ren's gonna run on over here and supply that to the nuclear reactor. And we can see that some things are happening inside of this. So if we go into the contents here, we have 60 kilograms of water, a bunch of enriched uranium at five kilograms, which I think has to do with this reaction mass target, which is how much uranium we're looking to use in our reaction. And then we have some water that is I guess our active water here, this is what's heating up. You can see that that temperature is increasing quickly. If I do some things here, we'll actually see how this all works. Let me just go ahead and dig that out real quick. I'm just gonna remove the background tiles. It shows up a little bit better. And here we have it. So this thing is now producing heat. So what it's doing is it's building up a decent amount of water inside of here, heating it up to 400 degrees Celsius, and then giving that off as steam. So it's belching steam out of here. Again, I don't know if this is how this machine's going to work once we actually see it uh, available in the game, but at least right here, this is what we can see. So in this example here, we're giving off all of that steam, and then right up here we have our steam turbines. So this is definitely in line with how a nuclear reactor works. We give off heat, it goes to a steam turbine, and that generates power. And we can kind of see that the water, in this case, is going to make a circular route. So it comes down here. I'm actually just gonna go right like that. So as the hot water comes out in the form of steam, we go through some turbines, it cools down, we take the power out of it, and then we cycle that water back around so that it gets hot again. One of the other things that we can see down here is that we're building up nuclear waste. 
So, as we use up our enriched uranium, we're definitely making a byproduct right here. Matter of fact, when they were just kind of teasing this DLC, uh, we saw this little container being carried away by a duplicate. And this duplicate was using a new suit that we have yet to see in the game as well. However, we can get a view of it using the sandbox tools here. So if I go under the spawner tool, there is the lead suit, just like that. So let's go ahead and slap that down and we can put Ren inside of it. Boop. All right, so here's Ren inside of that lead lined suit. And we can see some interesting things about this. It has three different bars right here. The first one doesn't really seem to be showing anything, although it is titled as oxygen. The second one is battery charge. So a bit like we've seen with the jet suit that requires petroleum in order to fly, there might be something that requires power in order for this thing to do. Whether it's move or whether it's to keep the duplicate safe from the radium or something like that. So we can see the battery charge going down ever so slowly here. So I'm guessing we're going to see our own docks and our checkpoints for the lead suits. And because they've now introduced the mechanic, which is the suits actually wear out over time, and that might actually play a factor um, with how much it's exposed to the radiation. So you might have to go and repair them or something like that. I think a lot of this is going to come together once we actually can get this nuclear waste out of here, and we should see the, a new set of germs in the game, which is radioactive contaminants up here. Matter of fact, if we take a look at the apothecary here, we can see that there's a new pill that kind of addresses nuclear radiation for our duplicates, and that is the basic rad pill. So if I just slap one of those in there, boop, there you go. You can see the information right down here is that it increases a duplicate's natural radiation absorption rate, which gives the duplicate the effect of minus 100 rads per cycle. Mmm, isn't that delicious, Ren? Just out of curiosity, let's take this and ramp it up a little bit, see if it runs faster when we increase that to 10 kilograms. Mmm, yes. It does seem like it's putting out more steam, so you can kind of control that, plus or minus. Now, one of the interesting things about this nuclear reactor here is that it's putting out steam at 400 degrees Celsius. Kind of an interesting decision to put it out at 400. Why 400? It does allow us to kind of play around with things a little bit more. So, a steam turbine up here, when exposed to 400 degrees Celsius, is actually too hot. So what we can do is we can close off some of these ports, the automation here, and reduce the amount of liquid moving through the turbine. But since it's still hot enough, we can actually still get a full amount of wattage out of it. It looks like it's about 300 degrees by the time it gets up there. So you can see that I've been able to close off two ports right there. And therefore the amount of liquid that's flowing out of here is only 1,200 grams as compared to a full two kilograms. So the interesting thing about this is that the nuclear reactor is limited, you know, to the input pipe, which is 10 kilograms per second. It can't flow faster than that. So by optimizing how little water you can flow out of the steam turbines, you can kind of get a lot more power out of that same maximum amount. So there's definitely some min and maxing that you can do with these reactors, which I think is kind of cool. So while this may not be the final nuclear reactor and how it actually works, I do like the idea of being able to min and max things like that. That's actually a really fun game mechanic. So as you can see here at 360 degrees Celsius. I was able to get this down to just two input ports. Again, reducing the amount of water that's going through there, but we're still dropping it from such a high temperature down that we're able to produce that full 850 watts without producing extra heat, you know, just on the steam turbine itself. Hey, look at this. Nuclear waste. It's come out as liquid. I thought it would actually end up inside of that container, which makes me think that that container is just not implemented quite yet. Let's go ahead and mop that up. Whoops, <laughs> I used the debug tools to do it. But do we have some new germs in the air? Yes, they are here, but there's only 20 of them. Let me try to not mop that up next time. All right, so after doing the math on this, if you only use two ports for each steam turbine, that gives you a total of 12.5 turbines per liquid pipe. So in theory, this thing might be capable of running 12 and a half steam turbines. So I have 12 of them lined up here, and I want to kind of see if it would actually work. I see it, uh, they do, they do work and they don't work. It seems like the water kind of backs up a little bit. It's almost as if it isn't consuming the water quite as fast as uh, these things can turn it into power. So I don't feel like the actual number is 12. That's just the pipe's maximum. After playing around with this a little bit, it seems like right around eight or nine steam turbines 
matches up well with this nuclear reactor, which is a heck of a lot of power. It looks like I've got my nuclear waste back, so let's see if I can mop this up. Make sure I... no, oh no. <laughs> Turn those off. I don't want to wait for that again. There you go, Ren. Come on in here and try to mop that up for me, please. Boop. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, you just straight up mopped it up. Hmm. Interesting. It did not go into a bottle. Well, let me go ahead and do something a little bit different. Let me just take a little bit of nuclear waste and put it right up here with my other dupes. Oh, okay. Or maybe a lot of nuclear waste. Good luck, dupes. And if we take a look at the germ overlay, uh, apparently they did, okay. That tool didn't spawn it with the right stuff. Yeah, there you go. Just mop that nuclear waste up, no problem. And if you see something that looks like an elephant's foot, don't get too close. Hey, look at that. Look at that little container. Nuclear waste. Ha! I think I managed to spawn this with absolutely no germs on it. This looks good. Perfectly safe, nothing to see here. Boop, there you go. Drop it in your water supply. That's always where you want it. All right. <laughs> Let me try this again. Nuclear waste, but this time we're gonna give it some germs. What did it have, like a million germs? Screw it, let's go with a million. There you have it, 10 kilograms of Chernobyl, just for you guys. Enjoy. <laughs> You're covered with food poisoning, okay. Huh, 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 germs, germs? There's more food poisoning on that nuclear waste than there is <laughs> radiation. <laughs> and you guys thought nuclear, come on. You guys thought nuclear waste was gonna be a big deal? Are you kidding me? You just have to throw some germs at it. That neutralizes it. Then did you know this whole virus thing was really just to cure us of nuclear problems? Oh, I spawned it with the wrong stuff. My bad. My fault. There you go. Radioactive contaminants, okay? There, that looks a lot better. Enjoy that. Go ahead and mop it up. And now, have you been subjected to nuclear radiation? That's what I wanna see. Radioactive contaminants. Are you kidding me? Hang on, let me brush some more of this on you. Yeah, 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 get in there. Splash around in that. There you go, Ruby, you picked it up. Yes, now you're just pouring it in with the water. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Huh? 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 Hey, there we go, Ruby's finally become infected. How you doing, Ruby? Okay, so my dupes are immune to diseases, which is probably why Ruby is doing just fine here. But you can see here that the surface germs are the radioactive contaminants there. And I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say that that's probably not a good thing. Now, just out of curiosity, how much power were we able to generate with the nuclear reactor? Wow, look at that. 4,573 kilojoules. I guess theoretically, if you were to turn this down, you would actually put out less heat and maybe produce less power. I think that's the idea behind the reaction mass target thing. I don't know. My question now is what happens if we deconstruct the input pipe and stop it from getting water? Come on, Ren. Come on, Ren. You know you want to do it. Initiating meltdown. Is it, is it the heat going to go up? Oh, yes. Oh, 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 my. Screenshot. Oh, they're little meteorites. <laughs> Holy cow, that's awesome. <laughs> Sweet. Look at all of these nuclear fallouts. Whatever you do, run. Um, oh, you're doomed, buddy. Here, go dig that up. Uh -huh. Oh, it's kind of hard to dig, isn't it? Oh. Well, there you have it, an early look at some of the nuclear stuff that we might see in the game. That looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't shut off the water. At any rate, that's all I got time for today. If this looks like the channel for you, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button or leaving a like. At any rate, have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar, out.